What is up my Warrior 8 Warriors and welcome back to another video, episode 15 of Bodyweight Basics. I was away last week, I was in uh, Prague and also Salzburg in Austria, um, which is why there was no episode last week, but we are starting back strong, starting a new phase today, and I'm pretty excited to get stuck back into it. Just a quick note for those who usually ask if I do any cardio, um, this currently, walking the dogs, that's kind of my cardio. As I was completely away last week, I decided to take the whole week as a deal. I think I mentioned it in one of the previous episodes, which basically means I didn't train at all last week, apart from a little bit of hand balancing here and there. This is actually a recommendation made to me by Dr. Jen Crane when I interviewed her on a podcast, and she mentioned about how she recommends every eight to 10 weeks, just taking a complete week's break from training. And it's something that I do try to do. This really goes back to traditional strength and conditioning when it comes to sports. You'd have an in-season and you'd have an off-season. You obviously want to peak in your season of your sport that you're choosing to play, and the off-season is when you do your hard training. But because of the nature of recreational kind of sporting activities, we want to be able to peak all year round, all the time, be lean 24-7, and we have to then introduce in some periodization, some rest weeks, some time off just to allow your body to recover and not get completely beaten up. So I'm pretty excited to start the new training phase today. And what I thought would be the best way to kick off this phase is to do a good old fashioned, traditional training commentary style of video where I just go through the entire workout and share with you exactly what I'm gonna do because there's, um, there's a few things that you might be surprised to see in there. <laughs> Just came back to make the Mass Gainer post-workout shake, which I'll link down below. I've shared before on this channel. It's a solid 900 calories right there. Today's session started off as always with some handstand work. Something that has come back that I haven't trained at all is the Stalder Press. This is again following on that concept of free gains. So when you train like-minded skills, then you end up getting results in that. I've been doing a lot of one-arm handstand work, a lot of elevation work, getting strong for the one-arm handstand. And I've also been doing a fair amount of presses, but I haven't actually touched the Stalder Press in a long time. And I tried it last week and I ended up actually getting a double rep for the first time ever in my training without really directly training it. Although today it was feeling a little bit sticky, a little bit lagging behind. Uh, the rest of my hands on has been going pretty well. As I say, I can't fully share the training session because it's not my program, but when I do come back to designing my own programs with the hands on, I'll be sure to share that with you. Um, but in terms of things going well, I'm getting the odd hold here and there, but it's more luck than anything. It is, however, feeling a lot more solid. Starting off this session with some weighted dips. Weighted calisthenics, weighted bodyweight movements have been something that have been throughout this bodyweight basics series and it's actually the first time I've used it in a long time but I have to say now currently speaking after doing this for the past 15 weeks after getting off that supraspinatus injury having included these weighted calisthenics I'm actually the strongest I've ever been when it comes to bodyweight training and again I haven't gone past anywhere that isn't a basic bodyweight move I haven't really strayed much further than push-ups dips pull-ups rows but just done well and done progressively, they can be very, very effective. These dips were paired with these 360 lever pulls. Uh, originally I was doing just front lever pulls. I haven't been able to do any back lever work, mainly because of the injured shoulder, the super spinners. I've been careful with doing it. So this is one of the ways I'm now starting to incorporate a little bit lighter back lever work into my training. Plus this exercise is an incredible bang for your buck exercise because you can train both the front lever and the back lever in the same exercise. Plus doing those back lever pulls will actually get you some planche gains as well. So it's like a three in one exercise. It's just a pretty awesome exercise. And then as a little tester, I haven't been training the planche tool, but I thought I would just test it out, seeing how it's progressing alongside the rest of this training. Then I moved to kind of into the bulk conditioning part. Just again, as I said, weighted calisthenics. I'm just doing some weighted pull-ups, keeping things simple. Uh, this is the point of this series. I think one of the one reasons that weighted movements are so powerful is that traditional bodyweight training, it's quite hard to get that progressive overload. This idea that every time you step in the gym, you're gonna do a little bit more. You're even gonna do more reps, you're gonna do a little bit more intensity, whatever it is. Um, it's a really hard concept to do without 
having some sort of numerical value in terms of weight on it. Uh, those weighted pull-ups were paired with these kind of uh, Victorian presses, I guess you could call them. They're basically for the lower traps and also the uh, rhomboids as well to strengthen them. This was then paired with some weighted ring pull-ups. Again, I haven't done much ring training for the last 10 weeks because of this injury. I've been trying to avoid that instability, but in this phase, I thought I would start adding it because the shoulder is feeling basically back to 100%, and weighted ring push-ups seemed like a good place to start. One of the reasons I love ring push-ups so much, and you can see it better from this angle, is because it activates the pec so well. Because the pec is involved in abduction of the shoulder, like bringing the arms together, you cannot really replicate that any better than doing ring push-ups in terms of squeezing the chest and having to squeeze those arms together. So it's a great, not only strength builder, but also mass builder as well, because I finished up with those five second hold in that support position. This was then superseted to the good old diamond push-up because we want to gain a little bit of mass in the triceps and chest as well, because why not have some aesthetic goals? It's always nice to feel good and also perform good at the same time. But that was kind of the main bulk of today's conditioning training. In terms of rotate cuff exercises, I've been playing with this reverse Cuban rotation. I guess really what it's doing is it's putting the glenohumeral joint through basically max external rotation under load. So it's primarily being used as like a mobility end range exercise, especially for improving some overhead and external rotation stuff but also it's gonna have an element of training the rotator cuff as well. This is again an exercise I'm not 100% sure on, but as of all of these things, I'm a big fan of just trying them out and seeing what happens. But if you are gonna try this exercise, I do recommend starting off light and then gradually building up. Um, I did also pair this straight to some traditional Cuban rotations as well, just to make sure the rotator cuffs did actually get some work in there. Just as a little tip for you, I thought I would add in, I've been doing lately, if you want to do some mobility work, but you're maybe at the end of your session, but your sessions are taking a little bit long, what you can do and what I usually like to do is add in my mobility in the rest periods for my normal strength exercises. So for example, today I had to do two or three sets of head to toe pulses. So I just did that in between the last few exercises of my training session, um, just in the rest period. They take another 30 seconds, so I take another 30 seconds for rest, and then that's kind of my rest period done and it helps me condense down my workout a lot. Save you having that extra 10 to 15 minutes at the end because you'll realize how much time you do not waste, but spend resting in an actual training session. Finally, finishing up with some mirror work, doing some standard good old bicep curls. Uh, actually one of the most functional exercises you can do when you think about it. Think about the amount of times in a day that you do a bicep curl, whether you're picking up something from a counter or carrying something out. Actually a very functional exercise and something that I've added in in this bodyweight basics and I'm definitely not regretting doing so. Obviously we couldn't forget the triceps as well as we're trying to build a little bit of size on them. Uh, I started off with a superset, so we're pairing some tricep cable pushdowns with a nice slow tempo, and this is gonna focus more on the lateral head of the tricep. And then we're gonna flick that round and then go on to some overhead tricep extensions, which is gonna focus more on the long head. Kinda hits the tricep nicely in all angles, and then the superset as well, give a little bit of added hypertrophy. But that's basically the complete workout, as always, in the description. Back to the vlog. The post-workout shake after that session, I'm actually feeling pretty shaky currently because I haven't trained in like a week. So the first session back always has the most kind of pump and then the most doms afterwards. It's nice to mix things up again. I love having a new program. It's just, it's always a refreshing feeling. This would be the start of block number two of bodyweight basics, kind of the phasing. I have actually only been doing one arm handstands now. This is the seventh week that I am starting. So I've been doing six weeks of intense training. This is week number seven, uh, which I didn't actually really think about until today. So I think all in all progress is going pretty well. One arm, fingertip supports feel so much more solid than they did. Head to toe still makes me want to throw up. And it's still nice to do a little bit of hypertrophy work, although 
this block, so this next six weeks of training, is going to be the last block of hypertrophy work for a while, I think. And I'm going to take time to focus more on skills and other different developments because at the end of the day, you only have that limited recovery capacity. So if you want to do hypertrophy, strength, skill work, as well as one arm handstand work, they all require quite a lot of effort. So I'm going to make worse progress in all rather than good progress in a few. I hope you enjoy this old fashioned commentary on training. As always, guys, the full training session is in the description down below. So feel free to give it a go find bits and bobs that you might like and might enjoy and maybe it will help your training out. If it does, why not hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. You can also go into the comments down below, ask any questions that you wanna ask, suggest any topics for future bodyweight basic episodes. This is very much a series dictated by you. So make sure you get down there and join the conversation. But that has been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.